Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's look at using Affinity Photo to cut out part of an image. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 700 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So many times in the past I've showed you how to cut out part of an image in a graphics app. Affinity Photo seems to be the popular choice now as a Photoshop replacement on the Mac. So let's look at how to do it using Affinity. I'm going to drag and drop an image from the Finder into Affinity Photo. And there you can see there's me and a background. Let's cut me out of this and then do things to manipulate me and the background separately and also just paste me into a different image. So the basic idea is to select just me and not any part of the background. And you have several tools for dealing with this in Affinity Photo. First let's go use the Brush Selection tool right here. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to use it to select the subject as best I can. Now up at the top here I've got a Width button. So notice this circle here is a certain size. I could change that size and make it smaller or larger using this control. I could also use the square bracket keys on the keyboard to do it. So I could start selecting me by just clicking and dragging. And you can see how it's going to grab some of the selection. Now we don't have to worry about it being perfect right now because we're going to learn how to refine this in several different ways. So let's first just start by grabbing the general area that we want. And you can see it does a pretty good job. How good a job it does really depends on how well the subject stands out from the background. So now we've selected a lot of things here. Let's refine it first by continuing to stick with the Brush Selection tool. I'm going to use Command and Plus to zoom in. You would also do it with your trackpad. And now I could just move around here inside of the image and look for places where things aren't perfect. So let's go and shrink down the width of the Brush Selection tool here. So I have something much smaller. And now I can click and select more of an area here. So I can fill in some of these spaces that it missed. Now in some cases maybe it grabbed a little too much. Let's do say this and say oh it grabbed too much there. I can hold the Option key down and then I click and it's going to subtract. You can do the same thing by switching modes between Add and Subtract. But holding the Option key down works faster. So let me go over here and further refine this area. And I could keep adjusting the size for what I need and see how well I could do here grabbing pieces that maybe I may have missed when I was zoomed out a lot more. So then once we've done a little work adding and subtracting areas we can go through the Refine tool. Click this Refine button here and it opens up a separate set of controls. Now notice how everything that we haven't selected is red and everything we have selected is its regular color. You can change that here using Preview. So that's the Overlay Preview. I can go to Black Matte or White Matte to just make everything I haven't selected a solid color like that. I can go to Black and White like that. And I can go to Transparent. Just make everything that I haven't selected transparent there. So you're going to switch between these because they each work better in different situations. Now you have several settings for the Adjustment Brush. You have Matte, Foreground, and Background. Matte will try to make things a little bit better if you select the area. And so you can see here the selection isn't so good. Let's zoom in a little bit and go right here. And I can click and drag this area. And when I release it will attempt to do a better job of selecting what's there. So you could use this to further refine things. Now if I switch the Preview I get a better sense of what's selected. If I switch to Background I can make something specifically part of the background. So I can kind of erase this. and Maybe get rid of some of this extra stuff right here. Let's go back to Matte and you can also adjust things like the Border Width. When you do that it's going to increase the width of the border there to reassess the mat and grab more or less. You can always use Command Z to undo things while you're playing with them here. You can also adjust the smoothness and it will adjust things a little bit. The feather. Different adjustments work in different ways. and It really depends on the image. How well it's cut out from the background and the foreground. How many things like hair or fur or smooth edges are in the cutout. So you're just going to keep playing with this. Maybe I'll use the background tool here to get rid of a little extra. Things like that. I'll go to the matte tool here and attempt to make this a little bit better. 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You really have to play with it. There's a reason why you have these tools here and you have to use them manually. It's because you constantly have to keep making adjustments. I'm going to use the Mat tool here and you can see it does a pretty good job in that specific case. Now let's zoom back out and look at what we've got. This looks pretty good. We can look at it in overlay here like that. We can look at it as a transparent image there. And when we're satisfied with it we can choose what we want to do with it. Now we could just go and hit Apply and we just have this area selected and then we could do things with it like copy and paste. But we could also select to create a new layer. So let's do that. I'll do New Layer and hit Apply. So now we can go here and look at the layers and we can see we have two layers. The layer that we just cut out and the background. I can make the background visible again and now we'll see both. The thing I like about this is if I make the cutout area invisible you can see the background still includes the subject. So it's just basically overlaying one on top of the other. Now we can do really cool things with it. For instance with the selected I could click up here to develop Persona and it will change the tools here and here just for changing the photographic settings of that layer. So for instance I can increase the exposure of just that layer and you can see it's just that not the background. So we can hit develop here to accept those or cancel. We could also add filters. So in this case instead of adding a filter to the subject I'll go to the background here and I'll go to filters and add a blur and I could just blur the background. I could hit Apply and now the background is blurred. Let's undo that and instead I can add an adjustment layer. Click here and let's add an adjustment layer for say the exposure. And I'll adjust the exposure and I can change the exposure say for the background like that. But if I go into Layers I'll see that the exposure layer is between the subject and the background. I can move it up and have it apply to both or I could drag it into a layer and have it apply to one layer or the other. So now what if I just wanted to take this subject and place it in another image. So I can select the layer here. I can simply copy it. And let's open up another image here. I'll just drag and drop to Affinity Photo the second image. So I have two tabs open. This one and this one. And I can simply paste this layer in and there it is. Let me switch to the arrow tool and I can move it here. I could shrink it or enlarge it. I could of course add those effects and adjustments to make it fit in a little bit better here. So it may make sense to add an adjustment layer for exposure here. You know, Increase the exposure of just the subject. So I'm going to go into Layers here and move it underneath this layer here. So now this is a little brighter. Work on that a little bit to get it to look a little more natural in this setting. And once I have things like I want I can go ahead and File, Export and export this out as a new JPEG image to share. Let me show you just one more example. I'm going to take a piece of stock photography and you can see here this is a bear on a white background. It would be nice if that's transparent. Maybe I could use it in Keynote over a gradient background or something like that. So I can do the same thing here. I can use the brush tool. Let's enlarge the circle quite a bit. I'm going to select the bear. I'm going to refine the area a little bit more. Go to Refine. Let's zoom in a bit here. Now I can use the Matte tool here and it will actually do a really good job because the background is so different than the foreground. So you can see I select this portion here and how much better it gets. Same thing here. Then I'll change this to a mask here. And what a mask will do is I'll keep the same layer but I'll apply a mask to the subject so that the rest of it isn't visible anymore. So it makes the background invisible. Then I can go to Layer, New Fill Layer and there's a color here. I can click on that and I can use one of the color tools here to choose a new color for that. Let's move it behind the bear. and Now you can see here the bear on any color that you want. Or I could simply copy this layer here and paste it here as a new layer here on this image. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.